which is the actual rezoning case of REZ 2022-10, the campus transitional facility at 2193 Howell Road. Currently EA, the request is for a PDR. It has well and septic, and this involves 23 acres. Mr. Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, commissioners, <coughs> the case is for EA to PD, uh, PDR, being more specific for a rural development as there is no uh, public utility system and served by well and septic. That is the difference between PD and PDR. It is within the agricultural character area, and there are some wetlands on the property. As again, you see here the overall aerial, the current house as it sits in the proposed site plan uh, for the overall property. Again, the Planning Commission would recommend denial, and uh, Commission, it's back to you now for consideration. Any questions for Mr. Dillon? Right, and we'll now move into the public hearing portion of the meeting um, and the same format we will follow and you can either have the same speakers come back up and repeat or you can have new speakers come back up each side will have 10 minutes um, in opposite one side opposition will have 10 minutes those in support will have 10 minutes and then again we'll follow with a two minute rebuttal so is there anyone in on in opposition that would like to speak in this case. Again, if you would, please state your name and address. Savannah Baker, 4046 Old Manor Road, Lake Park, Georgia. Um, I just don't think it's necessary for me to repeat myself since you've already sat through what I've had to say and with what someone else has already had to say, so I just welcome other citizens from our community to step up and say whatever else they'd like to mention. Very well. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this case? Speak in opposition. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Nora Perrette. I live at 2403 Howard Road, just three houses from that property. And I am the parent of a young man who has that problem. He's in Florida, he's not here. I've watched 20 years of him go through programs. The ones that have been most successful have had some close proximity to facilities, whether they were medical or employment opportunities. They had to have meetings every single day. He lasted the longest in those types of facilities. Where we live on Howell Road, there's nothing. There's no facilities, there's no transportation. There's nothing. But our houses, our yards, and I've seen the damage that he could do when he has a break. And I personally am afraid to let down the street from that. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please state your name and address for the record. Sandra Canada. I live next door, 2211 Howard Road. Um, I live alone. Um, I'm definitely against it. Um, my dad was in law enforcement. Um, I'm a baby of four. Never did drugs, never did alcohol. I'm familiar with my dad being in law enforcement with drugs and alcohol, and I am not comfortable with having men live in that store. Um, yes, uh, they can go somewhere else. Uh, Brett does have land. I don't know why they want to be over here. There's plenty of other places that they can be. Um, if they decide that they want to go back to their drugs they have or alcohol, um, and they want to, they don't have their money, where are they going to come next door to poor little old Sandy Canada, break into my house, get into my sheds, whatever, to get their money, and I'm not going to have that, I'm not comfortable. Yes, I know you all promised that he was going to put a fence between this property and mine, but I'm still in fear for my life. I've been there since 2007, I don't <clears throat> feel that I should have to move because of this, um, it's also going to lower my property if we should have redeemed living next door. I've invested, I've added to my home, and I'm 100% against it. 
please take this in consideration. I've been there, there's grandparents, there's many people on this on this home, I mean on Howell and around Howell that's been there for many years. Please have consideration for this, please. Okay, Redeem Living can go somewhere else. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Kelly Fessler, I live at 117 West Alden Avenue. Wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but I want you guys to know I grew up in a family of alcoholics. I grew up with an addict. My whole family, my, my 19 year old son has an addiction. I've seen this battle. I 100% support these people that have addiction. I support the young men sitting beside me. I had a meeting with um, Savannah. And on that day, no, he was in fact blocked. I am the one that he reached out to during this time. There are so many of these people that have no vote. They have nothing. And when the time comes, they are released back into the community. If you are going to help people, and again, my parents have both been through rehab. My son has been through rehab. They have to go through a facility that is accountable. A facility of people that are going to bring them accountable. I can tell you my adopted son was not held accountable during those times. He was not. I'm not here to speak ill mannered against this facility, what their intentions are. They need to be educated, they need to be regulated. And I, I'm not here to, to pass judgment on anyone. I am one that has a heart for people that are broken. And I have that big heart for that young man saying, I've been fortunate enough that I fought against the addiction all my life, but it's in my blood. I want you guys to understand, it's not about where the facility is. Hold the people accountable. This isn't about good old boy. This is about, are these people truly educated and able to take care of these people? They've got to. They have to. And if they don't, they're going to be right back at Mouse County or they're going to be out doing something just as they spoke that they're not supposed to be doing. Again, consider how are you as Mouse County going to regulate this facility and who are you going to put there? That's all I said. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Please state your name and address for the rest. My name is Beth Ann Grady. I live at 3615 Deerwood Road. It's at the um, other end of Warren Pond. However, the last eight years of my life, I have spent day in and day, day in and day out with a man that has chosen meth over me and my children. He helped me raise my daughter. He helped me build my business. And in one night, he pulled up to my job site and backed up to my trailer and drove off my truck, my trailer, my tools, my extension cords. I shot back the, the blades to the ceiling fan. Him and his brother and a buddy of his. Okay? I got proof of it. The girl came to my house, told me where all my tools were. I took the county and the detectives to get my tools back, and they're still walking. Now, in them eight years, he went through drug court, and he was sober. He was good. He was getting chunky. He was doing great. Everything was perfect. We were going to get married. And the moment, his life is gone, and he tried to ruin mine. And I don't think we need that so close. Because I also spent the first 25 years of my life in Akron, Ohio, born and bred in some of the really worst towns y'all can think of. I came to our agriculture, to our dirt roads, to raise my children where it's safe. We don't need this out here. They need to be someone where they can be took care of. I want them to get better. I gave them eight years, the best of me, hoping and praying. It ain't none of it was good enough for him. None of it. It ain't about a facility, it's about if you want to. And if you don't want to, that facility ain't going to do nothing but just make our taxes go up, make our property levels go down. Just think about it. We're single mom. I have two kids, I'm an elderly mom, and 
an autistic sister. All those women out there on one property. You can't trust the man anywhere, and I don't think we need a whole bunch more just running around out in our neck of the woods. Thank you. We have about a minute and 15 seconds. I'd like to read something from the Georgia Attorney General's Consumer Protection Division website in regards to recovery re residences. Recovery residences, sometimes called halfway houses, provide peer supported alcohol free and drug free living environments for people who are transitioning back into mainstream life following treatment in an alcohol or drug treatment program, released from prison, or those who are on probation or parole. These residences are not licensed in Georgia, so while some are legitimate, others may provide substandard living conditions with the goal of lining their owner's pockets rather than supporting their residents' recovery. One characteristic of some disrespectful recovery residences is an illegal practice known as patient brokering, in which the owners accept fees or kickbacks for transporting their residents to certain outpatient treatment providers. Sometimes these arrangements consist of unlawful agreements in which the recovery houses bring their residents to the treatment providers, and in exchange, the treatment providers refer clients who have completed their inpatient treatment programs to the recovery residents. The passage of Georgia General Assembly Senate Bill 4, which went into effect July 1, 2021, makes this type of practice illegal. Specifically, the law makes it unlawful for any person, including any substance abuse provider, to pay or offer any compensation, such as a commission, benefit, bonus, rebate, kickback, or bribe, or engage. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll go now with those that's in favor of this request. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please state your name and address for the record. Kimberly Hall, 2215 Riverside Drive, Georgia. Um, I'm Kimberly Hall. I am Brit's mother. Um, I have was not expected to do this. Sorry, so I'm not prepared. But um, I've been with him along with this ministry since he started it. It started originally in one of my rental homes that I never had a problem with. Um, they never had a problem outside that home. I checked with the neighbors on a consistent basis and asked. Um, two of my neighbors had no clue. They just thought it was some roommates. Um, so I did consistently keep going in and checking and saying, hey, they doing okay over there? Any more problems? No problems at all. We hardly see them. Looks like they just work and sleep. Um, and go off in the evening to what they didn't realize was meetings. Um, as far as accountability, there is accountability. I am Britt's mother. Um, one of the guys wanted to come somewhere with us and for his first 30 days, he was not allowed to. Um, they're not allowed to go out, you know, they're, they're with each other for their first 30 days. I'm his mother and he wasn't even allowed to go with me. Um, so, and I don't drink, do drugs, nothing, you know. Um, so there is accountability when the own mother of the, the, um, the houses that owns it, you know, can, can't come with me. So um, as far as accountability, that's to me debunked for sure. Um, I know my son's heart. I know the heart. Um, his heart was never to hire the people in the house. Um, but um, we all have heard everybody wants to help them, but nobody wants to step up and actually do it. A lot of times he's hired them after they have went several places and nobody would hire them because they have three or four DUIs or little misdemeanors or things like that on the record. People wouldn't hire them. So of course, eventually they can and they go to him and, they hire, and he hires them. So as far as that goes, that to me is debunked as well because he doesn't just bring them in to hire them. There's many of them that have not worked for him. Um, but the, the nicest is, is that he can give them a second chance if they're looking for that. And as far as people, there are people everywhere. I have a piece of property on 133. I had two people that lived, one behind me and one right down the road. One came and stole stuff off of my property. He, he didn't live in a facility. He didn't do anything. But there are people, bad people are everywhere. These guys are not bad people. They have went through a program that everybody keeps talking about. They have already went through that program. 
This house is not a, quote, we a program a treatment facility. It is actually after they have went through the treatment facility and then they need somewhere to go because not all of the family is forgiving or they just need to be separated from their family because sometimes going back to family members is not a great idea. Sometimes the family members have either enabled them or they're all drinking and doing drugs as well. So sometimes it's not best for them to go back to their family. They need a place to go where they can get started again and have some accountability. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this request? Please state your name and address. Amanda Moore, 3850 CO Moore. I'm gonna try really hard to make it through this, but it's more than um, This is a letter written by my father. Oh, I think you guys may have received it. I'm not very sure. Um, but it was addressed to you, so I'm going to do my darndest to read it to you. All right. To whom it may concern, I am writing to support Redeemed Living Ministries. I have worked with Redeemed Living for over six years. I believe this ministry is led by the Lord to provide freedom to men who have been held in bondage by sin. Men like you and I. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You and I and every human being born of man are born in sin and therefore we are born enslaved to our fleshly desire to be selfish which leads us to sin. Regardless of our sin, we all need a way to break free from the bondage of our sin. And Jesus provides that way. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8, 32. The type of sin does not determine our bondage. All sin separates us from living in the freedom that leads to abundant life God desires for us. Romans 6, 23 says the wages, what we earn, of sin is death, which is separation. Regardless of the sin, we are separated from the truth of God, and therefore we're subject to bondage. 1 John 1, 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So all of us here today are sinners in need of a Savior who can free us from the bondage and allow us to have the abundant life God desires for us to have. That is all these men are seeking. The question is, do we really believe the scripture? Do you believe you're a sinner just like these men? Or do you believe your sin is different than their sin because yours can be hidden? Do you believe your sin is more tolerable and less destructive? The Bible clearly tells us it is not. If you lust in your heart, you commit adultery. If you are angry with your brother, you commit murder. If you are prejudiced that you are not loving your fellow man as God has called you to. I understand that fear is a real emotion. It is an emotion that I have experienced many times over. I have experienced it through eight deployments while serving in the military. But no fear is like the fear I experienced the day my daughter told me she was in love with a recovering addict. It took great faith for me to put aside my fear and trust that the Lord was in control of my daughter, my future son-in-law, and my own life. I trusted the Lord in his sovereignty in the midst of my fear, and he has shown himself faithful. You see, that man my daughter fell in love with is the man that found in redeemed living. In great fear and trembling, he came to me and asked me to trust him with one of my most prized possessions, my daughter. Is he perfect? Heck no. But I can tell you, I have watched him grow into an awesome man of God, a man after God's own heart, a man that is faithful to do what God has called him to do in the face of really big challenges and even fear. I have watched God bless him, his family, and this ministry that God has called him to leave. 
You see, this ministry does not belong to any one of us. It is God's. And if you want to allow fear to drive you to block what God is doing in your community, then I can only pray for you and hope that you will not face the consequences of your lack of faith. We reap what we sow, and if we sow prejudice and hate towards our fellow man, then how do we expect to receive grace and blessings from God? The Lord clearly tells us it will not happen. I promise you one thing. Brent Moore, a successful businessman, is not here today asking for your support because he wants to be. No, he would rather not have to walk in faith, trusting God, to do what God has called him to do. He would rather stay in a comfortable, easy place, not trusting God for the resources and support of those who do not understand what God is doing in the lives of these men. I have watched and learned more from the men in Redeemed Living than I could have ever imagined over the four years I have served there. For four years, I went to ministry, minister to these men who live at Redeemed Living, and I received more than I would have ever given. I learned what miracles look like. I watched as God transformed men and set them free from bondage of sin. Were there some that rejected God's freedom? Yes, but it did not stop me from watching God bless those that trusted him. Let me close with this. You will have to put more faith in yourself to reject what God is doing in this ministry than it would to trust God to work out your fears. I am convinced God will provide for these men. I just pray you get the blessing of being involved. We have about 20 seconds. Anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Anyone else? Okay, here you go. We now will offer two minutes of rebuttal to the opposition. Um, we as a community have plenty of faith and have no hate or discontent towards anyone. We just want this facility to be facility to be run correctly and in a location where they can easily access necessary resources that they're going to need. Um, it was said that they had to previously attend the treatment facility prior to attending their program, but they previously had someone speak at a, a meeting who said that he had not been to a program previously to attend in years. Um, I would also like to reiterate that if they are a ministry and not a halfway house with a treatment facility, then why is this rezoning being entertained? We have about a minute and 27 seconds. Anyone else who would like to rebut? Uh, Jesse Bush, 2942, Dasher Thompson Road. Um, for starters, I'd just like to commend the folks that have stood up here and, and said what they've said about their own personal experiences and the addictions and the things that they're going through. And the folks that are helping as well. Um, and you always type these discussions and, and going through this process. Y'all you know, commissioners have a, have a difficult job. So thank y'all for your time um, and the decision that y'all make. I just want to say if it's if their men are here for, for three months, so we're running through four four times a year, a group of 50 men. It's not about any one individual. It's about the numbers, if it's 50% or 90% that's good, there's still a huge group that's going to fail at what they're doing, and they're going to be out there in the middle of our community. And as the numbers get bigger, the group that fails gets bigger. And I'm, I'm proud for the ones that are, that are on the right track and are doing right, but they do become a security and, <coughs> and a risk for our community. And just please take that into consideration that if it was at your home, if it was next to your house, how, how you would feel with your wife and your children times up laying down at night face the street. Thank you guys. Okay, we have two minutes of rebuttal for those that are in support. Anybody would like to take that two minute rebuttal? Park Avenue. I'm uh, 66 years old, lost a career in Atlanta due to my alcoholism. The accountability and the structure and the fellowship at Redeemed makes me a 
productive citizen. I'm active. It's, there's no question in my mind that it's kept me alive and I've been a positive aspect to the community because of it. Anyone else? One thing I just wanted to bring up, I mean, to me, that it seemed like there was some attacks on Brett Moore's character. Sir, if you would please just want to post your mind. Thank you. I'm sure that a lot of people in the community uh, noticed the activities that were going on on the property on Saturday. Uh, we had a cleanup day. We have actually already purchased the property. Um, we were in there removing carpet in the house and cleaning up the yard. Um, as far as this being some kind of great money-making venture for Brent Moore, uh, just to say that, that everybody that was working out there that day, the labor, that was all volunteers. That, that was people that are currently in the program or people that have gone through the program. On top of that, not only the people working out there, but there was the dump truck, dump trailer, about four of uh, Outdoor Living's vehicles, weed eaters, blowers, edgers, anything you can think of like that, and all of those uh, were using gasoline, that, and that came out of Brent Moore's pocket. And so, as far as any attack on his character, I, I, I personally take offense to that. And all we're trying to do is get these guys uh, with a closer walk with Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll close that portion of the hearing. If the mystery, I'll turn it over to you for your consideration. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. We have a second. Need a discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, those in opposition, three to two. Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Commissioners.